taking and even giving feedback can be tricky at times. I'm gonna cover um, how to deal with that, particularly um, clients uh, that are nitpicky, but also how to work with clients to give you the feedback that you need. Welcome to Pull My Focus, Adventures in the World of Digital Filmmaking, where we give you the inside tips you need to make great video. Though, uh, what we talk about here is video production, right? Shooting and editing and all that. Um, what I'm going to talk about here about uh, uh, taking feedback and even giving feedback is uh, applies to any uh, creative process, right? Where you have to work with someone else. First, let's look at the definition of feedback in the engineering mechanical world. The modification or control of a process or system by its results or effects. An example would be the heater where you live. Colder air goes into the heater and it comes out hotter. And a thermostat reads that temperature and tells the heater whether it needs to turn off and later on when to turn on, right? It gives it feedback. That's called a feedback loop. And when the heater gets that information, it doesn't get bent out of shape about that feedback. You want me to turn on again? I was just on five minutes ago. What's wrong with these people up there? Do they have windows and doors that shut? Now let's look at the definition of feedback for people, for creative endeavors. Information about reactions to a product, a person's performance of a task, etc., which is used as a basis for improvement. A bit different, but basically the same. The big difference is that unlike machines, we're people with complicated backstories, and these things called feelings that can get hurt, you heartless bastard. Can't believe you said that. Can't believe. Okay, so taking feedback is for a purpose, and in our case, a creative endeavor. Are we fulfilling on the brief or, or, or what the client wants us to produce for them? In our case, video, right? So that's an important part. Are you clear in the scope of the project what it is that they want? Uh, a two minute video, right? That's black and white. Is it two minutes or not? But the content of that video is subjective. And that's why it's a lot of pre-production work at times about making sure that we and the client are on the same page about what we're producing for them and why there's iterations, right? For us, first edit, second edit, third and final edit, hopefully, to produce what they want, what's gonna work for them. So that part's important. Now, with some clients, particularly when they're new, for us, that is, what we're new working with them, I'm definitely looking for feedback. I want to find out and kind of sort of narrow in on what are the nuances of what they want, the type of edits, the type of shots, if we're using stock footage or, you know, how, uh, when we cut away from an interview, do we use a little sizzle here? What kind of transitions? And we talk about those things, but after doing a few projects with them, we get to know them better. We know ahead of time what it is that they want, like, need, and what they don't. Sometimes a client will give you specific feedback. Hey, can you move that text over a little to the left? Well, okay, I wasn't very specific. Um, and my first thought is, why do you want it moved over and why are you telling me how to do, you know, I'm not your puppet. What I do in those instances is I, I say, sure, but what's not working for you? What about the text being there now isn't working for you? Because I, I want to know what's the problem they have with it that I need to solve. That's my job. Now, they might be right, but I find nine out of 10 times that's not the case. And I'm not gonna tell them and be rude, hey, don't tell me how to do my job. I'm gonna politely say, okay, but what's not working? You know, They're just jumping ahead and they think this is a solution. And if it's not, as I said, most of the time it's not, and then there's a lot of wasted time and efficiency and back and forth. Now they may want me to do it anyways. And that might be fine, it might be they just need to see it and eventually they'll get it and start trusting us more. But I also remind them that, okay, we only have, you know, two rounds of edits and then there's a final and any work we do after that uh, is billed hourly, right? And yes, that's in our contract and it's meant to 
prevent right this situation and, but it's fine if that's what they want to do and they they end up moving it back and doing this and trial and error um but the consequence of them using me like a marionette puppet is that it's my time and their money so okay fine that's why that's in the contract now this isn't always the case we work with a lot of creative directors at agencies and when they say move this text to the left 10 pixels, we move it. We gladly move it over 10 pixels. They know what they want. And usually, you know, they won't tell us they'll give us a new Photoshop or Illustrator file or the comp, right, with all of those assets. But sometimes it's faster, more efficient just to, you know, if it's just one thing, just move that over. And we'll, we'll gladly do it. They know what they're doing. They're an expert, right? And I might ask them, sure thing. And after I move it, I go, you know what? It, it works better, I'm not sure why. And they'll tell me, oh, well, you know, from a composition standpoint, da, 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 da. Or it could have just been, you know, somehow it ties into the client's branding. They always want something lined up. But that way, we have a great video that looks good. And I learned something from an expert. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see all our other great stuff. And, you know, we have a Patreon. It's very helpful to help keep us keeping on making these great videos for you. Now on taking feedback personally, oh my God, I worked hours on the slow push in and they don't like it at all. They hate it. They're gonna make this video crap. They hate me. Why? Something I learned when I published my trade magazine film crew back in the day. We would give feedback to each other, me and my business partners, on an article we wrote or edited. And man, there were a lot of feelings spanked raw. But then we would get the box of comp issues from the printer, hot off the press. We'd rip that box open and flip through the magazine and then see a pull quote where we spelled aesthetic wrong. Big on that page. In print forever. And that was frustrating. And we found out from friends who worked in publishing, um, there were a lot of them in New York City, that anything written, edited, published, whatever, had as many eyes viewing it as possible in order to catch those problems because they wanted to put out a good product. And like I said, print is forever. And so in that world, when someone pointed out a mistake, the reply was, thanks, good catch. And boom, that just opened up everything for us. It was a great uh, practice to just say that because it reminded us that what we're committed to was putting out a good quality product, not tiptoeing around everyone's feelings. So when a client gives you feedback, remind yourself, of that and you know you may not know why it's a good catch or where it's going yet you're figuring that out with them okay but what about when they're definitely wrong and we know we've all been in situations like this is a really bad idea well that's what they really want then you just got to do it just remind them right of why you disagree and think I don't think this is a good idea for these reasons right you're informing your client managing their expectations, but you will do what they want. They're paying you, do it and move on. It's theirs in the end, not yours. And it's a good idea to remind yourself of that. Some people will go, oh my God, but my name's on it. It makes me look bad. Well, I, maybe I, most of our work, our name's not on it. No one knows that we made that. But in the end, there's always somebody, right? There's a hierarchy. There's someone who's making the call and you just gotta make them right. You, you can tell them why, I don't think it's a good idea, but if they make the choice, the decision, then you got to make their decision right and go with it. A rule we learned early on in film school that I've taken with me uh, since then has been to give useful feedback as a viewer, as a consumer of that media, whatever it is. You know, because in film school, we all reviewed each other's work in class. And if someone said, you know, that shot in the hallway, I think a tracking shot would be better, the teacher would stop and go, no, 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 don't, you're not the director, they are. Don't tell them how to direct their film. 
tell them what's useful, which is as a viewer, what were you left with that didn't work for you in that shot? Oh, okay, oh, that's great, yeah, okay. So everything was super dramatic up to that point. And then when she's running down the hallway, it just was, it felt static and kind of limp, like it wasn't the, the drama and excitement was just gone all of a sudden. And then it picks up again after. That's why I was suggesting the track shot. And the person who made the film might agree, oh, now I get it, okay, great, yeah, track and shot work. Or they might have something else. It also might look like, I was confused at this part. I don't understand why that character said this, that I missed something earlier on, or I kind of started to chuckle. And it seemed kind of funny, but I was wondering if this was supposed to be dramatic at this point, you know? And a lot of times that's the case, you're trying to be dramatic and you're making everybody laugh. That's feedback that a creative needs and can use um, and is looking for. Any creative endeavor has an effect uh, on the person viewing, consuming it. And you need to know as the person producing it, am I creating the effect that I want? Are they shocked, surprised, happy, sad, confused, interested, engaged? And if they're not, okay, what's not working? What do I need to do to fix it? Now, sometimes you need to give specific feedback to assistant editor. You might say, I need all of the text plates to be um, just left justified. They all need to be on the exact same margin because they're popping all over the place. It's crazy. And sometimes it's just, you, you got to tell them the why. Later, you just, you just I, I need you to do this now. And they just do it. And later on, you can say, hey, listen, notice how in the first one, the text, right? The client really notices is popping all over. And it's not super distracting, but it's distracting enough. And they, their, their brand is they're very specific about everything. So all of that needs to be lined up. And even if one's a little off, like even by a few pixels, it needs to not, you know, sometimes it's just something that a viewer feels, right? And they don't know what it is. We just gotta hope when you tell them to line that text up that they don't take it personally. Thanks for watching. Let us know how many comments you have about you know questions, situations where you got feedback and it was uh, terrible, um, or very well given. Sometimes you gotta take it like water off a duck's back. <laughs>